Hey, so hi, my name's Abby. I'm a first year medical student here at Warwick. Um, my background is in neuroscience, um, so I got my degree from UCLan and I'm currently just finished the fir first week of block four, so we're about six months in. So I got seven rejections from universities, went into clearing, and I went to go and do a degree in neuroscience just because I'd fallen in love with brains over the period of sixth form and I wanted to learn more. And so I went to go and do that, spent three years of, in Preston, which was incredible. And then I applied for graduate entry medicine in my final year and got in first time round, which was absolutely incredible. I was not expecting it. I absolutely loved it. Um, it was weirdly the block that got me through block two, just because I found that a massive struggle. Um, but it was nice to hear familiar words again. It was nice to learn more about the neuroanatomy than I did in my undergraduate degree and it just propelled my love of neuro even further. Um, I still struggled with the same things I struggle with so pharmacology just hasn't gone in yet um, but it was really nice and the block lead um, it was just nice talking neuro with her and uh, geeking out over microglia and astrocytes and obviously having an oligodendrocytes so it was nice just to get back into familiar territory. Um, 100% yes, um, I don't think I've ever strayed away from it. I went to a neurosurgery conference a couple of weeks ago and that was absolutely incredible just to see people who were at the point of career that I want to get to in the future um, and I'm hoping to start uh, communicating with other neurosurgeons, just see if I can get in on projects, go and do some work experience. Um, so I know 100% that Neuro is where I want to go into. Um, so I did my first medical work experience when I was 16. I went and shadowed a oncology uh, consultant for a week in London and that was, it was just incredible and the difference that I made to people's lives uh, that just struck me and there was one particular point where a patient was calling my name from the end of his bed Bear in mind, I was just a work experience student and I was like, oh my God, are you okay? Like, what was going on? And it was just to borrow a pen. Uh, but the next day he wasn't there and I panicked. And I was like, what, what's happened to him? Is he okay? And he'd just been transferred to a new hospital. But it was that point that I realised that this is what I want to do. Um, and then started going on uh, applying for other medical work experiences. So I worked in a pharmacy for a year and a half as well as a dispenser, which was absolutely incredible. I got to get familiar with drugs. Uh, I got to talk to patients as well and find out just how bad doctor's handwriting is. Uh, I also went on two weeks of neurosurgery work experience, which was quite possibly the most incredible two weeks of my entire life. I first time I saw a brain um, being operated on, I don't think I'll ever forget it. Uh, just to see the, the, how pure white the dura matter was, was absolutely incredible. Um, and then my final piece of work experience before applying was in paediatrics, uh, which I just uh, went to clinics, so I sat in on clinics, chatted to the doctors there, and it was just nice to see how um, doctors interacted with patients and adults. Uh, sorry, children and ad adults differently and how this changed through a toddler towards a teenager. Um, I have, it's been terrifying, especially the first day we had bedside teaching. I remember just standing on the outside of the curtain being like, okay, right, this, this is real now. Um, but I've absolutely loved it. And I think I've been quite keen to go and kind of see patients by myself without my consultant standing there. Uh, we did that last week, so me and my friend just went onto the ward, picked a random ward and just went on there, which was really, really scary, but the nurse was lovely. She pointed us towards a bed that um, would possibly be happy to talk to us, and we carried out exams, we carried out histories, and I, I just absolutely loved every second of it, so I, I can't wait to get on towards more. Um, something that's, I suppose, quite unique to me at med school is that I have Asperger's syndrome. Uh, so I'm technically classed as a disabled student and a lot of the time people have asked me what's the challenges with it and honestly nothing. I The only thing I can possibly think I struggle with is actually talking to my peers. Um, that is something I really struggle with. I will slowly build in up conversations and slowly build up eye contact but otherwise like talking to patients is something I absolutely love because I can kind of put on a bit of a persona and pretend I'm someone a bit different. Um, 
with regards to sort of like the emotional context of it, I panic quite easily um, just because I'm quite hard on myself and it's sometimes a struggle for me to pull myself through areas where I know I don't really have that much of an interest in. So the neuro block, I was absolutely crazy about it and I was like, why, this is absolutely fascinating, why don't you enjoy this as much as I do? Um, but I know we've come onto block four now and it's not, not neuro, so I'm finding that I'm really having to push myself through it, but otherwise there's no downsides to it. And in the end, I think it's probably gonna make me a bit of a better doctor just because I'm gonna fall in love with the topic so much. I think it, it's been a lot different because here at med school you're in nine to five and m most weekends you're normally in one day just because of like uh, anatomy day or physiology day which is put on by the sur by Sir Chuck or other societies here. Um, so you're exposed to them a lot more and with my undergraduate degree I found that I could get away sometimes and just kind of forget about it all and just have a break where I could zone back into being me and kind of recollect but here it's constant you're on your ex and you have to kind of manage that because we have things like CBL, you have bedside teaching, which is where you work as a group. And even on days where you're really struggling, you, you have to perform as anyone else would. The, the people aren't different and they're absolutely lovely. And I've made some really good friends here. It's just sometimes it can get a bit overwhelming where I just like, right, I just want to do things my way today. Um, but of course, can't really do that in medicine, so it's just something I'm learning to adapt to at the moment. I'm not really good at this. Um, I have a ukulele in my room, so I will play that sometimes. Um, I have a guitar that kind of makes an appearance um, when my parents come up because I ask them to bring it up, and I will try and learn new things on that because my brain doesn't do well with just sitting there doing nothing. Um, I also have a, a blog which I run, I write about what actually went on during the week. I also write some other things about how to get into med school, well, how best tips to get into med school I suppose, and some other aspects. Um, and sometimes all you need is a good Netflix binge of a TV show that I've probably watched 6,000 times before, but familiarity is a bit of a comfort. <laughs> Ah, um, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> um, this is going to sound really geeky, um, Scrubs is probably up there, um, I really like How I Met Your Mother, and um, probably sinfully Big Bang Theory, just because I'm, I'm fighting through to the end, because I want to find out the plot, uh, but Young Sheldon is very much making up for the, the downfall of Big Bang Theory, it's very good. <laughs> um, it, just kind of happened one afternoon so I set up my Instagram account um, and it was just a bit of a document for me of my kind of applications to med school and getting in and possibly getting rejected and doing a master's um, but it just kind of developed from there and I found that I actually really liked doing it. I met other people through Instagram. I actually started talking to my medic mum months before I even arrived here so when I got the email about oh this is your medic mum I was like ah! um, and then I just kind of, I thought one day oh, I'll make a website and then the website happens. I've got all my blog articles on there. Um, I've recently kind of just expanded it onto different platforms. Uh, so it's just building up and building up and it's, it's just nice to know that the advice I'm giving people is maybe helping. Um, yeah, so I got a couple of messages this week from people who I've given tips to with regards to interviews and they said they got in. So that was really nice to have. I, the anatomy, I thought I was going to really struggle with it and think that it was going to be my worst subject but actually it's turned out to be the best and I really enjoy it and it seems to come a bit more easier to me than maybe the rest. Um, I didn't think I'd have a problem with drugs, I do have a problem with the drugs list um, and I think I thought I was going to be working like 8 till 10 every day and I'd never have a break and I'd never have a life but that's completely different to the reality. I make sure that I timing, like even an hour during a day where I'm just sitting there doing what I want to do. And I've actually got some really good friends and we go and do stupid things. Um, even if it's just sitting in each other's rooms, having a moan and a whinge about everything. So that's been really nice to find out. Um, I'd say don't give up. Um, I was gutted when mine didn't go well, but you, if you want to do medicine, don't listen to anyone who says, well, maybe you shouldn't do that now. 
just follow it, pursue it, just keep going and if you want it badly enough it will happen one day, you just can't give up. Um, probably applying to get into medical school. <laughs> um, we were asking this question the other day, we were like what career would you do if you find a doctor and I'd probably pursue acting, which is a bit odd but yeah. Enjoy Love it. Um, did the review this year, um, which was absolutely incredible. It was probably the most busiest two weeks of med school yet, but I absolutely loved it. And I was really sad when it was over. Um, predominantly one, uh, which is Henry Marsh. He, I read his book when I was in year 13, so this was a point where I was struggling and thinking that I was never going to get into med. And I picked it up and I just couldn't put it down. I had to read it to the end and he kind of knighted this passion for neurosurgery that I've developed. I fell in love with the book, I've read, reread the book six million times, I've listened to the audio book um, and I was actually privileged enough to do my undergraduate kind of uh, work, medical work experience with one of his trainees uh, so that was amazing. I got to watch an aneurysm being clipped which is something Henry talks a lot about in his books and one day <laughs> I will meet him. Um, not had the best of luck yet, um, but Ollie and Ear above got my book signed, which was quite possibly the best pick me up a block to that I needed. Um, so yes, that is that is something that I'm pursuing, and one day, one day we will get there. <laughs> That's really good. I think I think I'll probably do those. Yes. Uh, so that was amazing. I got to watch an aneurysm being clipped, which is something Henry talks a lot about in his books. And one day <laughs> I will meet him. Um, not had the best of luck yet, um, but Ollie and Ear above got my book signed, which was quite possibly the best pick me up a block to that I needed. Um, so, yes, that is, that is something that I'm pursuing, and one day, one day we will get there. <laughs> Uh, so thank you all for watching. Uh, my email will probably be on the, be on the screen right about now. Good luck with applications and hope to see you soon.